Hello, everybody. Welcome to the second <laughs> run at this. Take two. Take two. Um, we had a little technical problems before, but welcome to the podcast, um, uh, The Impact of the New Me. Forgot it. Um, today, we have a guest, Stacy, who was Hi. a uh, fellow patient with me in our inpatient um, day neuro program. Um, I'll introduce. Okay. Um, this, uh, we are, Stacy and I are in a program um, that is a very unique program to help people with brain injuries. Uh, we come to this day neuro program every day from uh, nine to six daily. Nine to three. Nine to three, sorry. I couldn't do nine to six. We couldn't do <laughs> nine to six. And uh, through this, uh, in this day neuro program, we receive services like um, occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy, physical therapy vision. counseling, vision <laughs> counseling, all of these things. And we both believe as teachers that this is probably the best setting of anybody with any kind of brain injury. This is one of the best um, settings in the country. So we're coming to you from a setting that is extremely um, beneficial to our growth and our development with our injury. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there to explain the setting. Now I will introduce a character. Um, <laughs> this is my friend Stacy. Um, Stacy's going to tell you her story and um, we're going to go from there. Okay. Hi, I'm Stacy. I'll be super brief just to kind of give you an idea of why I'm here and what it is I'm going to do now. But um, first of all, Sue and I both teach. We've been, I just retired from teaching 30 years. Whoop, whoop. Check that off the list. But um, I'm here because in July, my husband and I were on a beautiful vacation in Cabo San Lucas. We'd had a beautiful day on the beach, at the pool, golf course, getting ready for dinner when I began to experience excruciating pain in my head. Um, it was, imagine an, an ice cream headache on steroids. I knew something was immediately wrong. I told my husband I needed to go to the emergency room, call 911. Um, within minutes, I was unconscious and continued to be in a coma for 12 days. Had um, an emergency craniectomy at a hospital in Cabo San Lucas. They literally saved my life. I was intubated. I had blood transfusions. Um, you name it. And it happened. Um, ICU for six weeks after that. I was air ambulanced back to the United States where I had more brain surgery. I now have a shunt, which is a fancy name for a brain drain because hydrocephalus set in. That's something I'll have for the rest of my life. And then in August of 2023, the therapy, the hard part started. Yeah. The, um, Day neuro. Getting back to, to life. And I think we both are even though our stories are different on how we got here, mine was caused by a congenital malformation of an artery called a fistula that I was born with and could have ruptured at any time in my life. It right. waited until I was 53 and on vacation. But um, luckily I was with somebody that took me seriously and we'll talk later in the podcast that about totally the importance helps. of advocacy and when you know something's wrong to speak you know, up. Speak up and even if it's the doctors that are telling you you're fine or you can wait till tomorrow or I'll call you on Monday. That's not good enough. It's, it's up to you to advocate. We can talk about that more, but I think when Sue you know, and I, you know. when you know, you know, Sue and I are, are wanting to just to kind of express when you go something through something like this and, and nobody's really prepared. No, I mean, nobody, unfortunately, we didn't have it in our planner that on this mm -hmm. day, I'm going to have a stroke or I'm going to have a car accident or I'm going to, you know, run into a pole while playing sports or I'm going, you know, you're just not prepared. And when it happens, you go through those stages of grief you do. because you, you're, let's be honest, you're grieving who you were before, You are whether you were a spectacular person or not. I mean, I'm starting to realize, you know, looking at pictures of who I was before and what I looked like before and things that I did before, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But was it really what I needed to be doing? Was I really doing what was best for me? Was well, I really doing what was best for the people around me? Right. Probably not. And so in that way, I've really woken up and thought, you know what? I have a lot of gifts to give. Right. And I, I don't think I was utilizing all of them because I was yeah. very greedy and it was what's in it for me. Yeah. And I don't think life is always about. It's not. And I think that being me. surrounded by all these people that are givers, you know, mm -hmm. that really bring it out. I think also almost dying 
yeah. has a way to essentialize your life. Right. Like you're able to, all the things that used to be important to you, when you're in your hospital bed and you can't move mm -hmm. and you're relying on other people to move you to the bathroom so you can... Don't forget the alarm going off. And the alarm and your <laughs> wheelchair going off. When you try and move from your wheelchair, when you shouldn't be moving from your wheelchair, mm -hmm. um, the, when you are reduced back to being a child or being a baby and yes. relying on somebody Eating else, baby food. right? <laughs> the or just not being independent. Like, no. well, that's one of the things that you and I have talked about a lot. Is just rel shower. relying on other people for your daily activities is a blow. It's a blow to who you are and what you identified as a person. But it also is who are you going to be like? So, I mean, I know I was so clueless when I first woke up that mm -hmm. I didn't even know. Like, I didn't even know I didn't know. Kind I didn't of know thing. I didn't know either. So, and, and we could start our journey and our conversation there. Like, the discombobulation of being in a wheelchair, the, the loss of... The loss of privacy, mm -hmm. the loss of autonomy. Mm -hmm. Those are huge. Those were the biggest first hurdles that we had to get over. Yes. When I'm um, looking back at pictures of me in a wheelchair or me with a walker, do you ever feel like you're looking at somebody else? Oh, I do. And I like, had these glasses on. I brought them because I missed these glasses. <laughs> we both wear those, by the way. Prisms. We can talk Prism about that glasses, later, yeah. too. We're both going through some vision. Yeah. These are, I lost my vision and mine. But we, Everyone that we've met here mm -hmm. has lost something major. Like yes. And it, what I found interesting, Sue, is that um, the way that a brain injury affects a person is so different. And yes. my husband will giggle when he hears this because every time we go and see my neurologist, I have several, or a neurosurgeon, they say, if you've seen one brain injury, you've seen one, one brain, brain injury. injury. And the other thing we hear over and over is, it's just it's gonna true. take time. It's and my husband time. and I, it could be a drinking game, honestly. We just squeeze each other's hand every time we say that and we giggle to ourselves because there is no prognosis. No. There is no, no you're gonna no. be well in six months. You're gonna be well next month. Um, all they just of us, don't know. They we, honestly, they, they don't know. No, and it does just, I'm finding because people, I'm eight months in now and I'm definitely made gains, but I still have things like I've never regained my taste and smell. So um, eating is a huge challenge. I never thought that I would say that because eating has yeah. always been part uh -huh. of my social life. I've loved going, I'm a foodie. I love going to fancy restaurants. My husband and I love grilling out by the pool. I haven't experienced a summer yet where I'm gonna have to go through this and navigate it, but it'll be interesting because I'm like, no more burgers and beer on the grill in the afternoons. I mean, it just doesn't You'll have it. them, but you won't be able to yeah, taste Yeah, it's them. part of my You'll enjoyment. Go through the so, yeah, going through the I mean, going through that. And you know what? Maybe my taste will come back someday. Maybe yeah. it won't. That's what the doctors say. So, But I feel like all of us have a different challenge. Yeah. Like we have good friends that are still in wheelchairs that are struggling every day to get every that day. first step to walk. We have um, friends that are physically great. They're in the gym doing hip class and all kinds of stuff, but they can't string together a sentence. Yeah. And I think that that's one thing that I'm so thankful for being here in this environment is the fact of the opportunity to have our therapy friends. Yes. Because we can't, Stacy and I could spend the whole entire podcast talking about the caliber of professionals we have around us. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I would not be as far in my walking, in my talking, in all of the things, all of the things, right? without my therapist. So we are in a top-notch institution with top-notch people. Mm -hmm. But I think what sustains me during the day, I won't talk for you, but are our friends. Like, exactly. Like to watch Stacy or to watch Kathleen or any of the friends that we have walk down the hallway for the first time mm -hmm. or win in a game for the first time. Like mm -hmm. you were, right? That, right. those are the things that sustain us Or to here. smile. Oh yes, or to smile. Oh my gosh. I'm There's thinking like... big thoughts. Yeah, but I mean, sometimes, I mean, there have been patients that sit in their chair in a corner and the first week of therapy and just cry and don't want to be here. And and unless you've walked this walk, I mean, I get it. I, to I totally get it. Totally. And to see them on hardcore. a Monday to come and they've taken a shower and they've brushed their hair and they've got on clean clothes and they're sitting up a little straighter in their wheelchair and they're smiling and there's a eye contact tiny right? bit of a twinkle in their eye yep, i mean eye contact. that is progress and if you've been here and you've seen it and you've gone through it and 
I hate saying the old Stacy, the new Stacy, but, but it, it, that's basically what the it old Stacy Sue. I don't know if I would have recognized that in somebody. You know, I wouldn't have recognized the how little, the little things they were feeling. Yeah. You know, I would have been like, "Oh, come on, it's a beautiful day. Let's go, get up. Let's go. It's fine. Brush it off." But no, it's kind of like when you're having a panic attack and someone tells you to calm down. <laughs> That's exactly how it is. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, I, I, I wish I could calm down, but I can't. And it's like, right. they're thinking, like, and I was thinking, because I've been in that place now, I, I want to smile. Do you not think I want to smile? Do you not yeah. want to think I want to get in the shower and put on my best clothes and put on some lipstick and go, you, you think I don't want to do all those things? This isn't a choice, sister. Yeah. This is yeah. a life. I feel the way I feel because that's how I feel. Because that's how I feel. And... It's hard, but I and think because the friends we're surrounded by people like everyone. We started a text chain, which I yeah. I think is great. Hysterical. And, um, you know, I my family, um, Sue and I were kind of preparing for this before, and we were kind of talking about how what are some of the things that right. a person needs to get through this? Because who knows? I hope it doesn't happen to anybody that's listening to this podcast. But like I said earlier, you never know. Like we're surrounded by people that have been in car accidents, sporting accidents strokes um the a bm which i didn't even know what that was until this happened to me i mean there's a million reasons why you could end up here there are and there's just no no one can tell you or you can't plan there's... it or you can't be prepared so hopefully none of you have to endure this but thinking about if you do what are things that are important and i think number one is you got to have a, a person whether that person is a spouse or a child or a best friend yes. there's got to be a person. I mean, I've even gotten to where I have separation anxiety. Mine's my husband. He was literally, he literally saved my life. He was with me when this happened. He listened to me. He got me the help that I needed. He was by my side in the hospital every day. He's been a huge advocate for, you know, insurance and getting me to the doctors that I've needed and to the appointments that I've needed. Um, right. and, and there have been days where I just wanted to lay in bed all day. Yeah. There were days that I, this is gross, but there were days I didn't want to shower, didn't yeah. wash my hair, didn't and I'm still living those days, you girls, know what? So I'm glad you're <laughs> through them. <laughs> well, hence the baseball cap today, you know. But um, those, are the, those are the real feelings I think we all go through. And you've got to have somebody that's going to let you have those days because I think it's important that you have them. Yeah. But also, as long as you don't get stuck. And there's an amazing doctor here, and I won't say his name, so I don't know if I'm allowed to. I don't to. think we can. But um, he told me when I was was suggested that maybe I get on an antidepressant and I was telling my doctor I was like I don't really feel depressed I mean I think I I go through the depression but I feel like I'm supposed to feel that way like I'm not really feeling any ways that I don't think I'm supposed to feel and he and my my therapist both said yes you're allowed to feel that way as long as you don't get stuck so you're allowed to have a day in bed where you cry and feel sorry for yourself, but you need to get up the next day. If you find where you are in bed three, four, five, six yes. days in a row, then you might be depressed. You need and, some help. Um, yeah. You need to get some help. For sure. And I think in this kind of a situation, and if anybody out there is listening has had any kind of a health problem or a sur even a minor surgery of some sort, recovery is hard. Recovery is hard, and that's when you're told yeah. you're going to be well in six weeks. Recovery is hard. Whether like a broken arm, you know that cast is coming off in yeah. six weeks. If it's a surgery, you know that abdominal pain is going to go away in six weeks. That yeah. seems to be the magic number. When it's this kind of recovery and rehabilitation, there's no end date. Yeah. And there's no guarantees. Yeah. Some people won't get out of the wheelchair. Yep. Like, I hate to say that. It's the truth. We, we, only, so we only hard, speak truth. We only speak but truth. They just physically, things were taken away from them physically that won't allow it. Yeah. But God bless them. They're here every, yeah. single, every single day, day and they're making progress. The progress just might not be what they truly want it to be. Right. So I feel like <laughs> reality can kick you in the ass sometimes. Truth. But I. I appreciate, I think from my friends and everybody, I appreciate it as much as it hurt to hear. Wouldn't you agree that? I think the truth is like saying, like, I think that one of the things that that's that on this journey for me is that I, I for sure 
had a very low patience for lot people not telling me the truth mm -hmm. and blowing smoke, right? Right. But since my stroke, I have even less patience for mm -hmm. it. I'm like, I have lived through a stroke. Mm -hmm. What you're about ready to say is not going to hurt me. Right. Right. Exactly. And I think that there's something about this stroke that has made me even more feeling more invincible, yeah. more like we don't have a filter anymore. <laughs> I mean, should we have one? We don't know. But I think that that's one thing that when you go through a near death experience, it's like, what do I have to lose at this point? Exactly. You know, you could have the, the fates could have taken me during my stroke but chose to leave me on the planet mm -hmm. at this point forward it's all lanya that's all gravy exactly like, so i'm gonna do what i can do exactly. and i think that that's why we did this podcast is that we and we really and i really want to bring voices together and to throw it out there because i know i felt so alone until yep. i started talking Exactly. Like, it was so easy in, in, re, in, inpatient when they put you in that room. Oh, yeah. And you're in your room and you think, it, oh, you're the only person going through this. What if, <laughs> blah, 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 right? And that it's such a claus clustered life, right? And that if you're listening and you're in the position that we're discussing, we need to say, number one, this too shall pass. I hate to use these cliches, but there's yes. a reason that they have these cliches. They you know? are. There's a reason because we're both things, teachers and we both have taught what a cliche is. And it's a, we understand it's, a it. <laughs> it's a saying that's used over and over and over and over and over until it becomes real life. And yeah. this too shall pass. This too shall pass from the Bible. Island. Right. But I, and you can't do it on your own. Like there's so many cliches that when you walk through this life changing experience, you realize why these cliches generation after generation after generation use them. Right. Exactly. All right. And I think another one is, um, and this is not necessarily a cliche, but I think it's a common belief. This doesn't happen to me. This happens no. to other people. So I think yeah. part of that waking up in the hospital and, you know, I went through those stages of grief, denial being one of them. I was like, yeah. wait, what happened to me? I had a, I've never even heard of a, yeah. of this fistula in my brain. And why did they take half my skull out? And why do I have this shunt in? I'm like, this happens to other people. This like, does this not is happen to me. Yeah. And I even, I think both of us, one similarity is we both have vision problems. Yes. I'm um, hopefully having another surgery in May that will fix it, but it might not because again, there's no answers. Nobody so, knows. So um, just, you know, glasses are now a daily part of my life. Thick glasses <laughs> with yeah. a prism, double vision. I hope that I get out. Yeah, I have the prism glasses. Like, um, mine's a sticker on my glasses. I don't know if you can see it. But um, when I woke up, I was completely cross-eyed. I have something called strabismus. Um, completely cross-eyed. It was a palsy, actually, because my occipital lobe back behind your cerebellum was affected. My eyes were completely palsied in cross-eyed. <laughs> Technical difficulties. But, Welcome um, back, everybody. Welcome back. Yeah, hey. So just looking in the mirror i didn't even look like myself my head was shaved um there's still you can see hair growing in back here it's a mess so but i mean it's growing that's the good thing yep. Yep, <laughs> so um i mean imagine waking up and looking in a mirror and your eyes are crossed you're um shaved you have yep. staples you yep. have a big um mass right here because you have a, now a, a drain yeah. or it's called a shunt in your head i mean it, you don't even look like yourself. you're frankenstein -y. exactly and for me my my uh my big hurdle is the fact that i can't see i couldn't and i'm slowly getting back but i can't even see my face in a mirror now i can see maybe this part of it but and i think that those are the things that when you're a healthy person when you're an independent person when you're used to handling your business like we handle our business. Yeah, take that. That's There's cool. someone to block yeah. your pretty face. Um, when you, you're popular. I know. When you go through, when you have to <laughs> just leave, when you have to leave it, when you have to just get, um, change the way that you look at yourself or just change the way that you, like, get out of bed in the morning, right? You, you know, the very fact that, you know, I never used to worry about drinking water at night. Right. Right. And it's simple stuff like that, y'all. It's like I, I worry about drinking water at night because I have to come down some stairs to go to my go to my bathroom and I have to stop drinking water. At, and I Lord, forgive me that if I try and drink tea, but because like, you don't want to have to go to the bathroom during the night because 
nights where when stuff happens, right? right? Especially when stairs are involved. Especially when stairs. But you know what? Dehydration is a real thing too. Because yeah. that totally affects how I feel. Yeah. If I'm dehydrated. Yeah. It's so true. drink your water. Yeah. Drink drink your water. Oh yeah, because Maybe I need to get you a little porta potty to put. <laughs> I know upstairs, but I mean it's gotten better now, and that's I think that's where we want to shift. I want to pivot into for the last few minutes of the podcast. I want to pivot into like lessons learned. Um, I want to pivot into um, the gifts that you now have mm -hmm. because of the stroke, because yes. of the journey. So thinking back, you know, one of the things that, that I heard you say was that you were, you were approaching the world in a more shallow um, perspective, I think. Mm -hmm. And now prior, so prior, prior mm -hmm. stroke, pre-stroke, and now post-stroke, Stacy, you're deeper, Yeah. Yes. So, um, things that used to be super important to me, what I was going to wear, um, you know, food, going out at night, planning vacations, those were the important things. Going to happy hours with friends. Yeah. Now, my perspective is different. I mean, I just think gratitude overall. Gratitude. I mean, being with people that I really care about and care about me. And it doesn't matter where we go. We can just be at home. We can be here. Right. We can be going on a walk. We can do whatever. Being in nature, taking, I mean, and again, cliche, stop and smell the roses. I mean, yep. I think that we all take those moments for granted. But I think when you've had a near-death experience, I think you don't take them for granted anymore. You don't. And I think... You really don't. One thing you definitely lose in the hospital is your modesty. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, That's a true point. True there that. was, I mean, I had male doctors and male nurses and yeah. women nurses. I mean, they're all wonderful. And yeah. I sometimes had a gown on and sometimes like yeah. took it off. Didn't matter. Didn't yeah. care. It was like, you know, you just, and, and it didn't matter. Yeah. You realize, I think that you realize that the stuff that matters are um, the stuff that lingers still, right? Mm -hmm. the, the desire for a connection, mm -hmm. the desire to make a connection deeper, yes. to not just float on top of the surface of that relationship, right. but to dig deeper. And you know, I find that though I thought I was empathetic, though I thought before my stroke that I asked questions, like I find I'm even more inquisitive, like naturally yes. inquisitive. Do We're you? both special education teachers, by the way. We so are. we work with students with special needs. So I think we naturally, you have to have a heart for that, for that to job. do what we do. For as long as we've done it. So you have to love people, all people, yeah. all shapes and sizes. Yeah. And so I think we naturally have that but I think you're right because I do want to know as Paul Harvey would say the yeah, rest, the of, rest the story. of the story I want to know like why are you the way that you are and when people say things I think it's important to ask did you mean to hurt me did you oh, mean yeah. for that to be rude because I don't know that all yeah. statements are made with malicious intent I think sometimes people are just curious yeah and want to know, like, they are. especially working in a middle school. I mean, my hair has not always looked like this. So when I showed back up to work, they were like, why is your hair jacked up? Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people would That's be so insulted by that. So and I just school. laughed. Or why do you have that stupid sticker on your glasses? Do you know you have that? And I'm like, explain it. It's called a yeah. prism and it's yeah. used for double vision because my yeah. eye was affected in my brain injury. Yeah. And, and when you talk and tell your story people listen and I'm talking about 13 year olds guys so 13 year olds can listen and have a heart and say oh wow I mean they're finally getting it now yeah. like I have 13 year olds in the hall now come up to me and say hey how's your vision today like wow. how are you feeling today or your hair looks really cute and I know it doesn't but you know they say it because they kind of believe it or not as worthless, I hate using that word because I don't believe that people are worthless, but we know that we have felt that way sometimes. Yes. I think as worthless as you feel on some days, there are people out there that care about you. There are people out there that truly love you. Yeah, and I think that another thing to point out is that for you maybe saying hello, for you to see somebody, a stranger on the street or whatever, and give them a smile or say something kind to them might not be a big deal to mm -hmm. you, but could be a big deal to somebody else. It's and I think that deal. being here, 
has shown me the deep power of an authentic connection mm -hmm. and being authentically interested in someone and mm -hmm. not just saying, Hey, how you doing? And keeping on walking, but like, Hey, how you doing? And the big deep pause. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that even if you're listening to this podcast and you are not impacted by a stroke or by a brain injury and you're a caretaker, I mm, think that, that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> I know, but I think that one thing that we have to say before we sign off is the idea that words do matter. Absolutely. And we throw words around here and there. And I think that that's one of the things that maybe we'll end on is the idea that you are more powerful than you give yourself credit for. Absolutely. You are seen by more people than you imagine. Absolutely. And I've learned that, um, not driving yet. So I've been doing a lot oh. of Uber trips and just conversations with Uber drivers. Yeah. And you know, you have, you can always tell when somebody, like you said, is genuinely, they'll ask, everybody asks, how are you? Right. That's just a question that That's rolls off our do. tongue. But you can tell when it's said with intent and someone really cares how you are. And I found that in riding with Ubers. I've had Uber drivers that picking me up from a rehabilitation hospital. So they're naturally like, I've had some that thought I was a physical therapist. And I was like, oh, thank you for that. Right. Had some that thought I was the doctor. And then I've had some that are like, how long have you been injured? So right. depending on the day, but um, that genuinely care and ask questions. And yeah, so it's, I think that's a good way for us to end, right? Yeah, for sure. For and the, just uh, if I could walk away, if, 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 if I'm not lucky enough to be a guest again, and if I could just get a message out there. I mean, it, they're simple messages that are almost cliche like, but don't give up on yourself. Do not like You're no important. matter what you are so important. And if you don't have a person, I'm going to assume that you have a person. If you're listening to this, let that person help you and don't ever use the word burden in their presence because you are not a burden. I promise you, you're not a burden. You are a gift. So you are a gift. Go with that and Stacey, that's such a good end. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up, y'all. It's the truth. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Stacy. You're Hopefully welcome. You will be back. I will. Um, I love it. Hey you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that um, y'all have a great day. Anything Absolutely. any last words, Stace? Nope, that's nope. it. Signing off. Bye guys. Bye.